Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Let's Talk Stroke. I'm so glad that you're here joining me, and my name is Jerry Wald, and I am 10 years post-stroke. This morning's show is all about Modus Nova and their hand mentor, which I've been using for quite some time. They also have a foot mentor as well, and um, but we're just going to talk about the uh, hand mentor, which is which is right here. And I'm going to demonstrate how I put it on. You know, everybody has their own way of doing things, and that's okay. Um, but real quick, I just want to give you a quick background about me. Um, so with some of you probably don't know, and I'll interact with you guys too. So good morning, Kimmy. Nice to see you. It's always a pleasure to see you here. And, um, well, 10 years ago, I had a hemorrhagic stroke. Um, good morning, salute. Uh, had a, my hemorrhagic stroke at the end of 2010. Um, I was a, in an ICU for about nine days and then transferred to a uh, stroke rehab hospital. And uh, good morning, Marina. Nice to see you. And uh, so I spent about two and a half months in rehab. No, move, no movement at all. And uh, so when I got out of outpatient or out of inpatient therapy, um, they kind of graduate you. Good morning, David Caps. So I got out of outpatient therapy, and uh, and I wish I would have had this unit here because it really has made a big difference for me. Um, you know, I'm 10 years out, and some people say, you know, are you going to have any? Uh, are you going to improve anymore? You know, there was times uh, that uh, that's right. Salute October 19th. But um, good morning, Mike Peters, and good morning, Ray. And um, um, no problem, Maureen, do your thing. Um, so I use the hand mentor, and I've been using it for several months, and it's really uh, made a big difference for me. Um, as you know, recovery after stroke is, is kind of hard um, for survivors who don't get enough rehab, the hours to regain function. And with me, um, I've noticed a huge difference. And, uh, so there's a lot of different theories about that, but I definitely um, am a big fan of this hand mentor. Um, it makes a huge difference. I've been using it for, like I say, about, um, I'm going to say about four months. And it, it really re reduces the tone because this is my effective hand, as you can probably see. And it makes a, makes a difference. And, and I do want to demonstrate how, how I put it on. I know there's so many people that, uh, you know, have asked me, good morning, Lynette, have asked me, how do you put it on when you only have one kind of not so good arm and one good arm? Well, I'm going to show you. So what I normally do is, um, if you can see, I, I know the screen is kind of crazy, and I'll, I don't know why it shows a little white there, but, you know, um, so this is the unit here, and um, so I hold it with my uh I don't know, the teaching hand or the the, the not the non-affected side. So I put my hand in here, put my fingers in, in, on here, and hopefully it's in, and I kind of put my fingers on the, the pad here, and I try to keep my fingers exactly where they're supposed to go. Now, this is where you are not going to see because I'll do one first. Okay. So now I put one, there's two Velcro straps, and I put that on there, and it, so now it's, it's tight in the, where you use your, uh, your hand to uh, play these games, and I'll show you. So here is, um, so <laughs> this is crazy that I've got it all messed up here, but um, you know what, hey, um, I'm just going to add one thing here, Mike Peters, I see you're saying, you need to reach out to them, I'll put a... Uh, Good morning, David. Nice to see you. So I, uh, and the people are wondering, David Wu there is the CEO, founder of the uh, Modus Nova. Yes, my uh, Robocop. Let me let me show uh, show one screen here that I need to put on because Mike, you just made a you asked. Uh, good morning, Paul Quillen. Um, you asked a question here. Why is it in the UK? So let me give you one thing here and. Uh, if you could uh, see this, there, I'll put it up on the screen. So if you want to find out whether Modus Nova can uh, help accelerate your rehab, 
call or text this number. And so I'll keep that number there um, and just um, and just see if that's right for you. Because for me, it's made a huge difference. So um, if you do get one, it, it does come with a touch screen and this do wiki. I, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Put it on here. And I'm just, you know, and I, oh, by the way, I think I might have uh, Dr. Uh, Nick Housley on today for just a little bit. Um, so, and there's so many different games that you can pay, play, and it just has done wonders for me. I've been, I've been asked before, what about your fingers? Well, you know what? My fingers are really kind of like, like that. But, and then they have another option for that. Mine are kind of bent. So, and you can see the pad where I put my fingers on. It uh, straightens them out, and you have this Velcro, this uh, pad here, and you Velcro it on tight. So if I'm doing a game here, and I, I don't know, if, Heather, if you're out there watching, you're, I don't know if you guys can see this, but Heather is number one, and I'm number two on this one game. And this is the, the modus pads. I think I put it uh, down. So if you can see here, it says it's playful. So I'm going to, if you can, so it moves it. So it tells me to go up. I don't know if you can see this, and I apologize if you can't. Now it tells me to move down. So you've got to move it down until you, there. So what it is, you're, you're playing games, and, uh, but it's for, it's rehab. So, but let me, uh, this is a touch screen. So yeah, it takes it away there. So, but anyway, um, thank you, Modus Nova, for uh, responding to Mike Peters. And Dom, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, um, you've been using the hand mentor for four months, and my experience is much the same as yours. Okay. So you've seen some uh, progress in it. That's terrific. And uh, let me see. I've missed, missed some of the comments, and I, I appreciate that. Christy, nice to see you there. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to do one thing here just to kind of uh, move this around so I can see the comments because I'm not seeing all the comments there. But, uh, okay, so Glenn, good morning. Thanks for being here. So, um, again, I'm demonstrating how the hand mentor works. And for me, I, I tell you, it's made a huge difference. And uh, so I would I would suggest if you anybody's having any issues with, with um, their hand, uh, with the movement, uh, my wrist, and actually the tone in my form has made a big difference. And um, I know some people have said it's made a difference with their with their shoulder as well. But um, I 100% a believer in this, and I've used it, like I said, for about four months, and it's made a hundred percent difference. I, oh, Glenn, you're in Australia. Okay, well. Um, yeah, reach out to reach out to them. I'm bring bring this back up here because you, um, this is if you don't know how to get a hold of them, um, reach out to Modus Nova, and you can also I'm going to put this up here, ModusNova.com. Check them out. Um, this is called the Hand Mentor, and I'll keep this up so you can jot down the number if you want to text them or not. Um, and I'm not sure why I'm getting such a bad reflection on this um, but go ahead and uh, skip to the next game um, so I see if you can do it and, and this therapy the good thing about it is is that uh, you go to therapy you uh, okay so now it's telling me I need to do an assessment so uh, the good thing about this is that when you use it I can use it all day long if I if I wanted to and so when you go to rehab you know, with me, I have, um, I have, uh, and most of you who know that you, when you go to therapy, you have so many sessions a year. So in my case, I only can do 15 sessions a year by my insurance. So I have to get, and that's an hour a day. So I have to get the most out of, out of my therapy that I can get um, for, um, you know, for the hour a day for 15, 14 visits. So with this, you know, you people, uh, morning, Sherry, nice to see you. Um,
but yes, it is a uh, it is paying off using using this. But you know, think about your copays, what you pay for therapy, and compared to what this costs. And it's a subscription base. But uh, again, I believe Dr. Housley will be joining me here in just a few minutes or so, so he can go over all the details. Um, you know, I, I tell things in the layman's terms, so apologize on that. But um, again, so it's going to, I want you really to see this. Um, I'm going to take this off the screen here and see if you can see this. I don't know if you can. Now let's tell me the, how to, to do the, you can see, I don't know if you can, yeah, so, sorry guys. I'm using the, the flexion going down and the extension angle lifting up. If you could see the, uh, you probably can't see it, but um, it's telling me how much flexion angle I have and how extension it is. So, you know, the great thing about this, this, um, this hand mentor is that it, uh, if you have no movement, that's okay. Cause it definitely, uh, helps with that. Um, so it has like a, I um gosh, can't even think what the name is. Okay, Modus Nova, you guys can probably help me. Um, it it a lot it moves it for you, so you um it can recognize whether your your hand mentor is uh, is uh, you have no movement or you have very slight movement. It can actually help move it along on there. It, it's not painful at all, but I'll tell you, um, you guys really look into this it's a great great um unit here and um and it uh it's really helped me and i and i've used it you know after i'm done using it um and i'll tell you i, I talked to some people that have used this for um gosh um one week and have seen some improvements so i've seen a lot of improvements in mine so it's you want to use it as much as you can and again like i talked about is Think about your copays, and that you're not um, that you're not um, having to pay the copays because you know that can add up, and then you're done after you know my my case, 14 visits. Um, yes, Karen, check it out, modusnova.com. But yeah, you just um, you're gonna get your money's worth because you're not having to pay copays, so um, you can do it. You know, instead of like an hour, like mine therapy, I'm going uh, to two times a week for my therapy, um, one hour. Um, it can start and back up, but it's for the, the physical part of me because I broke my hip not too long ago. Um, good morning, uh, Carolyn. Nice to see you, Virginia. And um, yeah, so that, you know, yeah, there we go. It's, um, we'll have to wait for one more comment to check it out. But yeah. Thank you for putting that on there. Um, is that Ella? I, I think hopefully it's Ella there. Um, but yeah, it does help. And it, yeah, Dr. Nick Housley will be on shortly. Thank you so much. So he can explain it in technical terms. I'm the layman's term person. But uh, yeah, so again, I want to go back to uh, the copays. So for me, yes, Ella, nice to see you. <laughs> um, but yeah. Going back to the copays, that's what really sold me on it. Because you go to you go to therapy, and then you're trying to bust everything out in an hour, um, unless there's some other insurance. But for me, I can do the you know two, three, four hours a day. How, you know, you gotta see how your your comfort le level is. But um, and it, it makes a huge difference. So so I can do it all day long, and there's no no reason but to not do this, um, but again, I want to really put this on there. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna read this again from Ella. Yes, you're right, Jerry. Ooh, that came quick. Um, the device helps move move the user. Yeah, over time. The yep. It, it all. I'm sorry, you're going by too fast here. But but anyway, mo you all can see the uh, um yeah some of the thing. Okay, let me skip to here. I don't think Ella, can you tell me if this uh. If you can see this, I know it's so bright on my screen, so I can't see it um, right on the camera. So uh, it's going to the next game. But the games that I do, um, true, true that, Carolyn, good point. More bang over your buck. Okay, and this is the, this is blackjack. 
Now me, I'm pretty aggressive. So I, I want, Yvonne, nice to see you from Athens, Greece. So Ella, let me, so t uh, if you could see this. Okay, so now I have 10 minutes to go through on this. Obviously you're trying to get some more bang for your buck on this. So bet more, it's, yeah. Oh, this, okay. I'm gonna bet the maximum, 2,000. I mean 1,000, so there it is, so done. So, okay, so I'm going to stay. I don't know if you can see this, but um, so now it's moving. So, you know, if I don't move it, it's going to move for me. Not completely, but see, now I'm going to try to, if you can see, go all the way down. And now it tells me to go back up to see what my... <laughs> okay, the house wins. Guess what? I lost. But see, that's why... Um, when you can reload, can you see that? Uh, good morning, Brad. Nice to see you, bro. Um, can you see this? I don't know if you can anybody see the screen. Um, so back up to a uh, a thousand, I can actually bet up to. But now I'm going to go just bet up a little more. Just see if I don't mess it up. I'll just put the 900 done. And oh, now look, why did I bet there? Stay. Can you see it moving? Now it's telling me to push down. Now it's telling me to go back up to get my uh, point back. And believe it or not. Okay, I won. So now I'm at 1,800. So um, this, is, this is one game that I play. I'm going to go through some of them. So touch screen, like I said, anywhere. Okay, so skip to the next game. So I hope hopefully you all can see this. Um, yeah, gosh darn it, yeah. Not clear on the screen. I right, let's see here. I'm moving here, so whoa. It's getting there. Kind of. But uh, uh, and this one here too, I a slot the slot machines. There you go. You guys can see it. I can see it. Whew. It's only a risk. Yeah, but you know what? It helps with my tone. See, now I can bet. Now, if you can see the, the top, I have to bring it on up to pull the handle. Now to book down, pull down. And believe it or not, the, the funny thing with this, it's very, I mean, it really makes you work hard. Makes you work hard and uh, makes you work hard and uh, try not to hold your breath. It's just it's therapy, same type of thing. Um, don't quit. You got this. It says. Can you see this, you guys? See, I usually have it in a different position when I'm not on the screen like this. So. And lift it up and push down. I have pretty good flexion, um, good wrist extension. So, um, okay. So I'm going to switch to another game since you guys couldn't see the other ones. And again, it's a touch screen. So touch anywhere on the screen. Um, so I hit skip and it's going to go to a, the next game. Um, okay, good. Thanks. Um, Ray, thank you. You can see the screen. I'm glad. glad. And uh, how much does the frame weigh? How much does the frame frame weigh? <laughs> so, um, one second. Let me just read the other one here. Um, hi, Jerry. It's very awesome to see you work very hard. And from Kenya, thanks for being here, Irene. I appreciate it. Though right now I am in the UK. I wish I could get that. I tell you again. I'm going to take the screen on here. And uh, this here, real quick, just to, uh, I don't know if you can, from the UK, can you, uh, modusnova.com or anybody close, um, not close, but on the United States, there's a, you can call or text the number on the screen here. Um, okay, now this one's a good, this is Brick Breaker here, and this is another one that's uh, pretty awesome to play. So... You, you, you try you try to find some good ways oh, ways to uh, see and 
there's some people that are really good at it, and some people hold their breath a lot. And that's me. I try not to. But it, sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, you can see it there. They, there's so many things. That, and right now, Modus Nova is having a contest. So um, to get um, month three or certain types of things. Um, so I'm going to touch screen, get a different one here, and wait your um, – let me uh, take this off here a minute. Um, yes, for yeah, I'm glad you can see the screen. Yeah, I probably should have set this up properly a little more, but it's okay. I'm glad you uh, are enjoying this because it is a. Uh, it's been a lifesaver for me for the uh, for my wrist and open in my hand because there is a there is a, a tool that's a little cylinder that you can if you have a hand that's kind of. Uh, stuff like that, which uh, trust me, I, you all know I'm a stroke survivor 10 years and um, and uh, The therapy, I mean you get the therapy and I, I love therapists. They're You don't we don't give them enough credit what they're what they do for us um, but um, It it really if you Are not doing any therapy as far as um, I'm 10 years out doing if you're not doing any therapy at home or not even um, going to physical therapy, um, doing occupational therapy, you need to look, look into this. I, I'm telling you, I, I brag on it all the time because it, it's really made a difference in my life. Um, so please uh, check it out. And I, I'm just going to read some of the comments, so if I'm not saying anything, um, yeah, uh, very light about one pound. Yeah, it's not that it's not that um, heavy. But here's the thing: when you're using it. You know, you're working your arm. People don't, you know, people, you think, oh, you're just going up and down, up and down. Let me tell you, I sweat using it because you're working hard trying to get to the, to the, uh, to the top of the uh, leaderboard. Okay. I'm not, I'm on, I'm not, I'm on the board here, but the, so I'm going to skip to the next one. There's, there's one game I don't play because I, I haven't done it yet, but, uh, but I play the ones that I like. And uh, and it makes a, a big difference. So let's see what this one is here. Ah, okay. So now somebody's in. This is my favorite game here. Um, it's called Plinko. And uh, and what you're trying to do is get the. First of all, I'm at 165,300. Uh, my score, and someone now is at 186,100. So. I'm 20,000 or so behind this person, um, but I, you know I, I know a lot of the people that are on these because they. Uh, let's see if it shows up here. It may be too. Probably not. Can you see? So it's telling me now to go down, and you can't really see. Darn it! Lift the ball, throw it in the little slot. And he, there it goes. And you can see how the, if you can see the ball moving, they're a uh, hundred. So um, that's just so many that they have. So uh, now if I just touch screen, go to the skip and look for another one here. Um, check it out. Let's see here. Um, I'm glad you guys are all um, talking to each other because I really appreciate you guys being here. Just to look at what I'm so excited about and thrilled about the hand mentor. I, you know, I showed you in the beginning how I put it on. Um, and it makes a, it, it's, you know, at first, it's really not at first. I mean, it's, you could figure this out all by yourself. Even a stroke brain like me who, uh, you know, my brain has changed obviously because of the, uh, of the stroke. Uh, see, it's not sending any stim. No, not at all to the muscle, uh, which is perfect. Right. Because it can't interfere with, right. A pacemaker or anything. No, no, no. It's, there's no Electrical, it's like a it's an actuator. It's like a pump. It's a pump. It's an air pump that um, You know you I think you can hear it when it was going here um, Let me skip here because I'm uh, not on the leaderboard there. So um, And it was bright because it's going through the motion to the next game um, But again, I let's go back to the uh, let's hear um, uh, There's some other things so 
you, yeah, this, this is this is great. So, you know, a lot of strokes virus, brain injury, all that, um, with lo, little or no movement, um, have trouble doing rehab at home um, without an expert or a caregiver. But you know what? Recovers recovery after stroke is still possible. It, it you know. I don't want to say still possible. It is um, whether you are ten days or ten years post stroke. Um, you just have need many hours of rehab to make that happen, um, and that's why this is so beneficial. So please um, check it out. Um, I, I can't see that thing because my logo is on there, uh, Yvonne. Um, it is the only piece of actually it excites me. Yeah, it. I'm telling you. It does. It, it excites me too, as you can see. I'm very excited about using this, and uh, I've uh, I've learned so much of uh, what I can do. So I, you know, I posted a video not too long ago of me picking up a box of uh, it's kind of funny actually, a box of something it was in the freezer, and then I opened the freezer with my non-affected hand and just this hand, and I dropped in the uh, the box. I'm kind of tossed it in but um i try to do that so i can look back and say wow look how far i've come 10 years out so you've got to keep at it i mean i always say you know stroke is not for the weak um you just got to keep at it um okay so now i can see you yvonne it's the only piece of equipment that excites me on the market truthfully yes again i'm going to bring this back up just for you guys to yvonne you can you can actually here, here's the the uh, the uh, text or call. So I'd suggest you call out, call them. But let me let me uh, do a do a quick little thing here to uh, let's see here, real quick, guys. There it is. I just changed the uh, change this to somebody that's very amazing to me, and he is the the. Um, Dr. Nick Housley, uh, Clinical Research. Good morning. Hey, guys. Hey, Jerry. Right. This, is, this is Dr. Nick, everybody. Say hello. And uh, Dr. Nick, I put the comments on the side so I don't have to keep pulling, bringing them up. But I don't, you see, I got my hand mentor on. I showed, I showed the viewers how I uh, put it on. And, you know, for me to just figure it out, it, like you said, it's, it's fairly simple. It's just, you know, I find a way to make it happen. And it and it's done wonders for me. So, yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, for having me on this morning. And I apologize for being a little bit late. I had a couple yeah. of, uh, other things to get to this morning. Uh, but yeah, yeah, exactly right, Jerry. I think that um, you know we have sort of these standard, uh, uh, I guess, examples about um, how to put the hand mentor on uh, or the foot mentor for that matter. Right. Um, but I think the best thing to do is to maybe take those as uh, as just guidance. Really, and uh, you know, provided you are able to um, get it in a position where it's safe for you to use, comfortable for you to use, um, yeah. and you can enjoy using it, I think that's fine. Um, you know, I think there's a, a lot of ways to, to put it on and take it off. Yeah, it certainly is. When I started, I take the strap, let's see, mm -hmm. like, and I actually put it in the in the little slip where the, uh, you know, I, I was telling everyone this morning that I do in layman's terms and you do the technical stuff. So. So sure. I, I put it in this in here, you know, let it there instead of just trying to mess yeah, it around. Yeah, yeah. And it works for me. That's for me. And I know everybody is their own. They do it their own way. So that's what I do. Yeah. Um, I think there's multiple ways to do it, right? I think um, there's even, um, uh, you know, you could even have it where it's uh, the couple of those straps are already attached and you kind of just have some wiggle room to kind of have that, I like to call it the clamshell, right? The clamshell can yes. kind of be open but attached. So it gives you a place to kind of um, uh, direct your your fingers to. Um, now that doesn't work for everyone. Um, you know, if you, especially if you have a, a lot of tone and you can't really get your hand fully extended to kind right. of um, fit in that, that may not work for you. Um, but if you can get your hand kind of open and, and straight enough to kind of slide in there, that's a good strategy too. Yeah, exactly. And, and, um, and I, I've been just, um, Say hello to everybody too. Uh, now sure. are coming on a little later. Jana, nice to see you from Canada. And salute, nice to see mm -hmm. you. We see um, Yvonne here too. Hi, hey Yvonne. Um, and uh, Carolyn, I think we have as well. So um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, Yvonne from Athens, Greece there. 
And Carolyn, I, I believe Carolyn, you're in uh, New York, kind of in Long Island, where I used to be living. But um, yeah, I really enjoy this. I um, was it Plinko? The uh, yeah. we drop the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And pick it up. Mm -hmm. I was in the leaderboard, but now someone overtook me by twenty thousand. <laughs> but this is it's the great thing about this, and now is that it's so um, competitive. So it really mm. makes you work real hard. And I you know I used to have when I was, you know, kind of not totally crunched up, but sure. I looked like that. So with me putting my hands in this in the clam shell, you know, it, it does straighten it out, but not you know, kind of like that. But I tell you, and the tone for my arm. Yep. You know, I don't know if you've heard that. The tone really makes a big difference. Yeah, and that's something that happens pretty quickly too. I'd say, you know, um, of course. All the uh, individual responses can vary, but um, seeing those changes in like the range of motion in terms of the ability to move and that kind of reduction in tone, those can happen fairly quickly. I think that was something that you noticed too, Jerry, and, and other people have noticed too. Like that can happen, you know, in the first week or so, kind of some, some nice changes there. Yeah, I, I have the first week I've noticed the tone, but in mm -hmm. the first week, just to say, anybody who's uh, new to getting it, the first week I was sore. Sure. But a good sore. It's just like going to therapy the first time. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I've talked about this several times before. I think it's good to kind of distinguish these sensations that we feel. You know, I think um, we often will get caught up on terminology. I think um, there's there's imprecision in, in certain things, and it's good to kind of clarify. And I always say that it's okay to be sore. It's okay to have that kind yeah. of um, that tiredness, if you will. It's not okay to have pain. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in fact, I was just talking about this last night on Real Power Hour, and the, um, you know, that 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 that's a pretty um, uh, strict thing, strict rule that I generally um, work with. It's just it shouldn't hurt, um, but if it's tired, uh, that means you're being effortful. It means you're being engaged. Um, if you're not getting sore or not getting kind of tired from it, that's also an indication of maybe something that's happening um, on the other end of the spectrum when you're not actually um, doing enough. Yeah. Um, so. Exactly. Can, I know there was a comment earlier about sure. um, um, there's someone had a pacemaker. I don't, I don't know if that was a uh, mm. uh, and will it affect because it's a, an actuation. It's a um, air pumper. You know, again, I talk in not I talk in layman's terms, but can sure. you explain that? Yeah. So um, the technical name for this, and, and I'll do this, guys. I'll talk in the technical term, and then I'll break it down. And so. The, the technical term for this is what's called a McKibben air muscle, uh, just after, named after the inventor. Um, and these are basically, um, they're air muscles, as Jerry said, they're kind of pneumatic actuators is the other way of thinking about this. Pneumatic meaning kind of um, pressure and uh, actuator meaning movement. And so what it does is it has uh, it's two components. Um, it has an internal bladder that can expand and contract. And when you uh, put two ends, two sort of fixtures on the end of this bladder, you can actually anchor things. And so um, we have two metal, um, uh, I guess, anchor points on the ends of that bladder. And when you pump it up, it actually will contract, um, come together. And that's how, how we actually translate that linear movement into this angular movement that you see with the hand mentor. Um, and of course it has a um, sort of a nylon sheath around this to protect it and to kind of limit the amount of expansion that it does. Um, but effectively it's a very, very nice way of providing assistance um, for individuals with neurologic injuries. The main reason for that is um, when you consider some of the problems when you move really quickly, right? Um, or you have, uh, um, uh, let's say a lot of force applied that can cause some changes in the way you're responding. Uh, most notably, you can induce spasticity. Um, and there's a number of reasons why that's the case. There are these length sensitive sensors that are in our muscles that are supposed to be highly active following neurologic injury. And we want to avoid triggering that response. And so having a smooth application of force can be quite helpful um, in reducing the probability of having um, tone kick in. And so that's why, one of the reasons why we like the, uh, the, the McKibben air muscle. It also has a very, very um, uh, smooth upper limit, and it's not going to kind of jerk around. Um, and so it also has a, as a, a sort of a, a upper ceiling that's going to be a fair bit less than what any muscle could do. So you could always overpower it if you wanted to. 
Uh, and that's important because of the safety concerns. So there's the neurologic concerns for, you know, working with everyone with a neurologic injury, but then there's just general safety concerns, right? We, we want people to be able to use this independently. And one aspect of that is it needs to be safe for you to use independently. You don't have to have someone that's like there all the time, you know, with an emergency stop button saying, okay, if this goes wrong, I gotta, I gotta press this button. Um, um, something like this McKevin air muscle is really good because you don't have to have that oversight all the time. It's just, um, it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, it, the upper limits of its force profile are, are such that it's not going to cause damage to your, you, either your tissues, um, your tendons or your muscles. Yeah, exactly. And what I talked about earlier too, is that with using this, if you're not mm -hmm. going to rehab, like I go to physical therapy mm -hmm. recently and it's two hours a week. So sure. one on two, uh, um, Monday and, or Wednesday and Friday. So it's an hour and that's it. So yeah. with this, you know, the great thing about it, first of all, you can get 10, 15 or how many hours you can get in a week. Yeah. Some people are doing a lot more than that with this. And also there's no transportation cost. I mean, you're, you're going to sit in your home and just, you know, do this. And it's a lot of fun. You're not bored with, cause I know you guys are coming out with more games. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's, um, uh, you know, we're, we're on a pretty good schedule for game development. Um, I like to call them therapeutic exercises because they are, but um, they're, yeah, they're, they're games, effectively. Um, it's really, it, they're just uh, really cool ways of getting you to do your movements. So, um, yeah, and I, I also, I, I wanted to quickly um, go back just to sort of close out, round out that point about um, pacemakers. If someone has a pacemaker, um, there's no con the other reason for having the pneumatics is there's really no contraindications to things, right? Um, unlike electrical stimulation, in which case um, it may be contraindicated if you do have an implantable device, uh, whether that's like an LVAD or a, a pacemaker, these sorts of things, uh, or even a DBS, a deep brain stimulator. Sometimes um, putting electrical st um, stimulators on can be sort of um, contraindicated, meaning it wouldn't be appropriate. And so having that pneumatic systems uh, are, are pretty nice because they're broadly applicable. Um, even if you have other uh, medical conditions, you have to be um, careful of. So that's just another sort of um, benefit of that. Um, yeah, but you're exactly right, Jerry. I think um, being able to have this in the home, being able to use it independently, really crucial to be able to get um, those those high high uh, amounts of hours that are needed to cause changes in the brain. Um, and if you um, you know if you are doing therapy at present, uh, there's no reason why these two things can't work together. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not antagonistic to each other. I mean, it's um, it's a funny concept. We actually get um, uh, more of those comments from uh, the business side. They're like, well, don't don't therapists think um, this is going to take their job? And uh, and the therapists are like, well, no, not at all. I think it's um, is this, this is certainly complementary because the uh, they recognize that there just aren't enough hours that they have in a day to help all of the you know help the demand. Right, right. Exactly. So true. And I always think of, because uh, no matter where you are in insurance, co-pays. Mm -hmm. It's so much for co-pays. And you only get one hour of, of, of a visit. I mean, that's, I don't, that's probably mostly true for everybody um, sure. if you even have the insurance. So this is, it's been a lifesaver for me using this for the months that I've yeah. been using it. It's made a huge difference in you know, the fine motor skills. It's helped me to use do my fine motor skills, you know, by able to open my hand more. Mm -hmm. So for me to use in fine motor skills, which I wasn't a big fan of, a big fan of it, but I I know I needed to do it. You know, picking those little pegs out and sticking yep. here and there, yep. it was difficult. So I'm doing it myself now just because of this. You know, mm -hmm. taking it off, um, taking a break, and then trying to do what I used to do or try to do. So I yeah. see, I've seen a huge difference. Um, yeah. Well, actually that, that's a good, that's a good question I have for you, Jerry. What, what are you, um, are you incorporating like um, new tasks into your daily life? Like now that you're kind of getting more movement and more function, are you able to do more things? And is that kind of encouraging you to do more and more and more? It's kind of like a good positive feedback loop. Yeah, it okay. is. And I shouldn't, I, hopefully my wife's not watching because um, she wants me to do more, chores around the house and oh, even yeah. like, like doing the towel uh, folding towels you know the bath towels or whatever so i grab with um each side of the towel and so yep. i can do it more and more and I, i've noticed a difference even at that or even um i don't like to see that picture i did 
grabbing that box on my counter and putting it in the freezer. Um, kind yeah. of toss it in there, but just like that, instead of uh, me not be able to do that. So all these little tasks have made a big difference in my recovery. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, like water bottles. So yeah. now my wife, Barbara, is telling me, you know, you have no excuse not to do this stuff because you worked hard using this. So it's made a difference. She sees mm -hmm. the difference. So um, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's made a big difference. Yeah, I'd say, too, that this is super important, guys. I think um, just as a general message, even if it's not with the hand mentor or the foot mentor, whatever you're doing, like whenever you get new function back, whenever you get those improvements, like you have to incorporate it in your daily life. Uh, kind of the, the the kind of string, the, the sort of temporal characteristics I, I, I talk about are you have to build this foundation of movement, right? You have to have the range of motion, you have to have the strength, and then you have to have the, con the coordination to actually do something like, you know, pick up a, a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, now you can, you can do, you can gain all those things by doing exercises. You know, you can also do it with the modus hand, the modus foot, but the most important thing is not stopping there, right? You have to then take those skills that you've gained and incorporate it into your daily life. Because what happens then is you get more and more function because those, you know, what you call them, Jerry, uh, the chores um, become your therapy. Right. Yeah. The, the chores are then your therapy, which is really cool because there, you know, there's some nice, um, uh, uh, I guess, benefit. Right. Um, there's a more distributed worker on the house. You can help her out, uh, help out more. But um, the, the, the best part is, is the step after that. Right. After you do that, the chores are no longer your therapy. You're just having to, you know, you're just doing chores. It's just that's, you know, it just becomes integrated into your life. And you're just now using your hand or your foot normally then, which is the ultimate goal. And so I think it's exceptionally important to actually take what you have, those little skills and do them, uh, uh, use them in real life and real functions. It may not be pretty to start with, but you have to, you have to do that. You can't just um, sit here and do um, strength exercises. You have to then apply it to something that's meaningful to you. Yeah. And I completely agree. These are things I used to do all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. dishes and, uh, all those little chores and I call it, but no matter what I'm regaining function yep. because of the hand mentor, haven't used the foot mentor, but the hand mentor, I, mm -hmm. I noticed a big difference, especially with my, uh, with, um, the finger straightening. Cause I used to, I don't know anybody, I'm sure a lot of stroke survivors, brain injury who had the same thing. My, uh, they, my therapist used to make molds for my hand to lay straight, yep. even when I go to bed. And, uh, so I don't have to do that anymore. Like, um, so uh, I can I can curl it, but I know how to get it back straight. So yep. I've noticed the difference even in that. So um, it doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night trying to keep my hand straight the whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. use the uh, that little mold that I was that was made for me by my occupational therapist. So okay. I mean, that's one thing good. I mean, all these little people don't understand. I mean, the what this can do for you. Uh, for me, again, I mention it all the time, and it's almost like I, I should be working for you guys just because <laughs> showing you this this thing really works good. I mean, it's, it's made a difference in my life. Yeah, and I think the one thing that's also like really important to recognize, and, and you're kind of you're saying it, Jerry, but it's really kind of there's a little undercurrent of it, and maybe it'd be helpful to just say it like really explicitly, and that is that it takes time right yeah. uh, like you know you guys know me we've talked about this a lot on on power hour and all these things like i would love to be able to snap my fingers and have everyone get their function back sure um i'm sure everyone would like that um the, the, the fact of the matter is is it's a long process and being able to see these little changes over time really really important for you to stay motivated because it is often a very protracted process um so yeah, you, you know, these little things like not having to wear that brace, being able to do things a little bit easier to straighten your hand easier, you know, all, uh, you know, all the improvements in functional tasks, super important. Um, you know, and then having something that can help you track that progress. Because um, one thing, I don't know if, if, if you've noticed this, but changes in range of motion can happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you now have like a new function, right? Because like there's a pretty binary um, step between not being able to pick up this coffee cup and being able to pick it up. Right. There's no like in between. Um, the in between is you drop the coffee cup and you get coffee everywhere. Um, yes. So 
a lot of those, uh, the, there's could be some significant time between you not being able to do it and being able to do it and being able to stay motivated in between that, um, those, those kind of step changes can be really, really important. And something like a robotic system can help you kind of monitor those, those, those bits of progress um, uh, over time. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about too, in terms of like seeing these small changes and you're talking about it from a functional perspective, I'm talking about it from like a data perspective, it can be, can be quite, um, quite useful. Yeah, I, I do celebrate, but I always say I love to celebrate those tiny little wins yep. because they add up. You think, oh, I'm not making progress as much as I should, but then mm -hmm. I take pictures and video all this stuff and look back, wow, where was it four months sure. ago? And sure. I'm 10 years out. Yeah, so, well, what would you, I mean, Jerry, I mean, one of these tricks that I've used with individuals is like knowing a priori, like before all this happens, like it's gonna take a long time, right? Um, right. Do you, would you recommend people like, you know, as you say, like take pictures or take videos? I often will say, hey, let's take a certain task. Like um, if it's brushing your hair, folding a towel, whatever it is, like early on, let's video you doing this. Yes. And let's time it. And then we can kind of revisit and then maybe re-video um, your abilities a month down the line, two months down the line, et cetera, et cetera. Have you, have you done something like that? Or would you recommend doing something like that? All the time. I. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing more and more of it, but yeah, I, I recommend that 100%. And I wish I had more videos from when I was 10 years ago in my yeah. in the hospital. I had some from some of my kids doing, it, but yeah, I, I've seen a huge difference. Looking back, think I'm net. This is, I wish I had this back then when I, uh, because I was never told. The only thing I had was that little mold that they to keep my hands straight. Yep. But yep. Um, yeah, I take videos all the time now. I take videos pictures. Um, yep. I'm starting to get more and more into it because it, I can notice the progress. And, and it's not for me just to, um, what would you call it? Uh, not just say, oh, I'm really good. No, I do it to, for, to track my progress. Sure. You know? Oh, yeah. You, you have to do this for yourself, right? I yes. mean, really, like it's it's really hard, right? And you, I mean, I guess you don't have to do it for yourself, but I think that can be um, a, a super imp important uh, anchor point, right? You really just need to do it to track and, and to, and to, and to to kind of, I don't want to say prove yourself, but kind of give yourself that backup. Like, hey, yeah, I am progressing. I am, I am getting better. Right, and to show other brain injury stroke survivors mm -hmm. that you know what, yep. I can do it, and I'm taking pictures, and hopefully it inspires them to you know what he's doing. It. Let let uh, yeah. let me get on track and do a little more yep. because that's another reason I do it too. Yeah, not for the glory. <laughs> yeah, um, a salute has a really good a good. Um, comment here about um, even taped um, uh, speeches. Um, yes. So uh, talking, that's important as well. If you have any um, language impairments, um, then uh, whether that's um, uh, understanding on the receptive side or on the expressive side, can be really helpful to have like a fixed sentence, right? Um, yes. if, if even if it's just something very, very small, very short, um, you just have that sentence and you maybe have that individual read it out. Um, and you can you can see really quick changes. You don't have to analyze it. You just have to look at it, um, right. right? Listen to it rather, um, and you can see um, whether or not there's improvements over time. That's a, that's a good recommendation, Salute. Yeah, yeah, Salute's amazing. Um, yeah, it's so true. She knows that I do that mm -hmm. so many times. I've done so many that I haven't posted, and I'm starting to get back into the to show those out there. Yeah, um, because. I, that's my thing. I like to see the progress I make and, and I can, I've seen it time and time again. And like mm -hmm. I say, those small little wins. Um, yep. And again, I, I, this right here, I wish I had this years ago because it's, well, I would have been further, further along, but I don't look back. It's, you know, it is sure. what it is. And I just work hard at it. And this is a, but again, I'll put this out up there. Most people in the United States, right? Um, but I know there's a lot of people that are inquiring all over the world. Yeah, there are, yeah, and we uh, we will do our best to make international um, deployments work. Um, we have some issues with you know uh, making sure that all the regulatory stuff is is handled and appropriate. But yeah, we'll I think on those individual cases we will we will handle them um, on like on a case by case basis. Um, so we've made it work in the past, and so we'll we'll do our best to make that work. If you're not in the United States, yeah, and it so. is amazing. I. I I can't remember who you were, but uh, she was here from Kenya and mm. uh, talking okay. about she wish she had one of these. And I think she's in the UK now. 
Um, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, we even, um, you know, I think on, was it on Monday, we were working with someone in Bolivia, right? Oh. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I would, again, love to be able to get this out to everyone. I think there's a, um, there's some, despite all of our, our, our interest and our efforts, there's, of course, barriers to, for even us to getting um, these, these systems out to people. So we're, we're trying to overcome those. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I appreciate the, I appreciate you taking the time to join me on this because it really, yeah, um, totally. to have somebody technical on here instead of me just yapping about this thing, how I am so in love with this. It's made a yeah. big difference in my life. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and if you guys have any questions for me, I think um, uh, I'm I'm busy, but I'm a fairly open guy, as, as you guys hopefully uh, will know by now. Um, kind of any question goes with me. Um, and if I don't know the answer to the question, I'll find out someone who does. Um, and so if you guys have questions, whether it's about just general neuro rehab, um, you know, the recovery process, um, I've been doing this for a long time and, um, I've got access to resources too. Um, and so, um, just you can consider, um, us, you know, a general repository for kind of knowledge in this sense. And, you know, we can also provide a conduit for you to help get that progress. And that's just, you know, through the modus hand, through the modus foot. Uh, but I, I do encourage you guys to ask me questions. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I just, I just want to be available to all you guys. Yeah, I no, appreciate that too. And yeah. and, I, and I'll respond and sure some of these comments here too um, when it's over here because uh, I see like Carol and Jerry, it's so uh, important message because people can always continue to improve mm -hmm. with experience dependent neuroplasticity. Yes. Yep. 100%. So, but anything else you want to um, say to the our viewers out there that could uh sure yeah i mean it's um it, it's it's just always a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk with the community i think um and you know right now our our main goal is to get awareness out right i think we spent so long trying to make sure that that um the system uh the modus hand the modus foot are able to effectively help people right induce those yeah. positive changes those, those neuroplastic changes and now we're trying to really get the word out um, to the community that these are available and they are, um, they're options, um, for you to help in your, in your path to recovery. And if, like I said, if there's any questions about its appropriateness for you, you can always reach out to us and, um, and we will uh, do our best to, um, to give you an answer. And, uh, we really are just looking forward to, um, talking with anyone who's interested in this, um, in neuro recovery and, uh, and see if we can help in any way, shape or form. I really appreciate that. And by the yeah. way, Serena, thank you so much for saying you've seen a, an improvement. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know, I we only could see well me the small little improvements because I'm yeah. doing it all the time. It's yep. When people see it, and that's why I do the videos. Yeah? So that makes sense. So yeah. Uh, well, good good stuff, you guys. And again, thank you all for joining us. And uh, and we'll be doing more uh, streams on this. So um, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And if you guys, um, again, um, uh, Jerry, this is for you as well. If there's um, instances where I come on for a short bit of time and answer some like technical questions, I'd love to do that. Or even come on and talk about, you know, well, what are the mechanisms of neuroplasticity? It's some really kind of cool things that we can get into um, uh, at some point. And so um, I'm happy to be a resource for you guys as well on those fronts. Just let Jerry know in terms of what kind of things you're interested in learning about. And uh, we can kind of put some uh, put some things together. Perfect. And I Yvonne just asked a question here before we're going. Mm. Uh, yeah, so Yvonne, so when you're dealing with spasticity, how do you rectify it? Ooh, this is a good one, Yvonne. So spasticity, it really depends on where it's coming from. Um, I think um, if we're talking about individuals with stroke, that's usually coming from uh, a, uh, it's called disinhibition. Um, that's a big fancy word. Basically, there is a, um, a disorganization in the way that the spinal circuits are being managed. So this is a common um, misunderstanding in that the, the neurons that actually control our movement are not in our brain, they're actually in our spinal cord. And there are um, circuits that are in our spinal cord that do a lot of the local control. So there are the, the, the nerves that actually connect with my, with my hand and my, my arm are in my spinal cord. And when they fire, my muscles will contract and move my arm. Um, those are under there's like a circuit pattern that's in the spinal cord and that's normally regulated with the cortex the brain and so you can imagine there are these two kind of networks that are distributed that have a normal function that we learned 
Um, and what happens is when you have a neurologic injury, the top network in our cortex um, doesn't communicate appropriately with those networks in our spinal cord. And when that happens, there are these issues of how systems get regulated. And so the nervous system has, it's not just an on or off switch, there are on, off and negative switches. So it's not just um, bimodal, there's actually uh, multiple um, um, states that the nervous system can operate in. And so neurons can not only be excited, but they can also be what we call inhibited. And one of the common problems is um, after neurologic injury, those networks become what's called disinhibited. So you can kind of imagine two negatives happening, two negatives equal a positive. And so when you, when you multiply them together, and when this happens, you actually get a network in the spinal cord that's much more excitable. And this is what happens when you get something that's much more excitable and I move my arm into extension, that causes my flexor network to really kick in and contract. And that's where that spasticity comes from in, in, in stroke. Of course, it's a little bit different in spinal cord injury or multiple sclerosis. They have different underlying mechanisms. Um, but one thing that we can do to help prevent that is, or I guess to, as you said here, rectify it. Now there's of course like fixes for this, right? You can paralyze muscles with certain medications and these sorts of things, but those are all transient, right? Those don't actually address the underlying problem, which is the, the dysregulation of the system. And so what you generally can do, um, and I don't know if you can fully ever rectify this, you can do things to combat it though. And one of the best things to do is to find ranges of motion when those, um, uh, the spastic events don't occur. Uh, and this is where we can be really, really objective about your movement patterns. And so let's say hypothetically, you can move in these ranges of motion here, and that doesn't induce any spasticity, okay? But as soon as you go above this, that actually will trigger those networks to kick in and to cause that reflexive response in you to contract and get in this posture. Yeah. So what we wanna do is we wanna operate in ranges of motion that are not gonna cause that. And so we have to do a rigorous evaluation about the ranges of motion that are safe to move in and have you move in those ranges of motion. And you can slowly, very subtly, start to move into ranges that are extending above that. You can kind of imagine a, your capabilities as kind of a bubble. And you wanna kind of expand the range that bubble gets, the sort of volume. And so you want to kind of move that bubble out. And you can do that by moving subtly into those ranges of motion that might cause problems, but maybe not such that it's gonna cause a significant problem. And so you can do this progressively over time. And the hope is that you can expand that bubble and you can gain more capacity to move. Um, there's also other kind of tricks you can use. Um, you can use heating or cooling, depends on your responsiveness to it. Uh, but generally speaking, you wanna do movements because those are the things that are gonna cause the problems to happen. Um, and you wanna be able to move ultimately, so you need to have the right context. You can also do some really interesting things with like trying to fatigue the system out. Um, there are um, neurons get fatigued too, just like your muscles do. And so you can do some interesting things like um, uh, fatigue induced um, reduction in this excitability. And so you can do a bunch of fatigue and exercises and then you'll get more range of motion and you'll get less um, uh, tone in some cases. Um, so there are some, there are some tricks, uh, but I'd say there's no one specific um, cure-all, unfortunately, um, Yvonne. Perfect. That's a great answer there. And uh, that was awesome. So thank you so much again Perfect. and uh, reach out to Modus Nova, ask questions, um, text or, um, or call. Yeah. Right? yeah, or reach out to us on the Facebook group too. We're there um, uh, yes. when we're available, yeah. And what's the name of your face group? Facebook group? Uh, it's the Modus uh, Nova Support Group. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you again. Okay.